My name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And, get rid of that shadow, um, we're going to talk about relays today. And we're going to look at, there's loads of different kinds of relays. There's two-pin flasher relays, there's three-pin flasher relays probably. Uh, there's another three-pin flasher relay there. We're going to uh, look at wiring up a four-pin uh, real basic run-of-the-mill relay that you would probably use, uh, for example, to operate spotlights on the front of your car. Um, the reason why we use relays is we can't have all that current flow and big bulbs, real bright bulbs, you know, they tend to, well, they do use a lot of current flow and we can't have that current flowing through a little toggle switch on the dashboard. Um, but you can, but it won't last very long. Um, so by using a relay, it protects that switch it also drastically reduces the amount of thick, heavy wiring you need within the circuit. Essentially, we're splitting it into two circuits. One's the trigger circuit, and one's the, the, the actual working circuit, the, uh, the circuit that would power the lights. So, um, well done, Marmite. Finding rats, I think. Um, so we'll dig a relay out. Uh, we'll do a little quick diagram on the cardboard, and then we'll wire it up, and uh, I'll talk to you about how it works. Okay, so I've had a rummage around and I've found an old four pin relay. And uh, if you look very carefully, this one also has got on the front a little diagram. And you can see there's two circuits. And the number's 8586, which relates to this circuit here. That's the one with the little coil, that's the actuation circuit. Okay, so when you press I'll turn the switch on the dash, a current flows through that little winding and creates a magnetic field. And that magnetic field, if you can see here, look, there's a switch, a set of contacts. That magnetic field closes those contacts. And it's this circuit here which would feed the spotlights themselves. So you've got um, 30, which is common for battery positive. So you've got a, a positive feed coming in, that switch contact closes. And then it goes off to the spotlights. Now, some electricians, some guys that just do nothing but wiring, prefer to switch the earth on circuits. Um, I don't. Uh, they say it sparks less than the contacts, but it does mean you've got lots of uh, long lengths of constantly live wiring on your vehicle. And for me, uh, given what I used to use my vehicles for, that's not really good because wires can chafe through and that kind of thing and then you get you know problems of, of things shorting out so I like to switch the live so when I turn things off the only wire that's that's battery positive live is the one that's running from the battery positive terminal um, to the relay beyond there it's it's not live at all so it's quite safe unless the lights are on it gives me a bit more control okay so we'll do a little diagram on the cardboard uh, and then we'll set up a little circuit and watch it working Okay, so on the little relay, we've got um, the, the trigger circuit. Now, if we if we just draw that up like this, got the trigger circuit coming down, and we'll use that as the coil of wire, and then that goes to ground. Okay, and we're going to have the switch there, look, on the dashboard. So we've got 12 volts coming in, battery positive. And this is the switch on the dash. That's the dash switch. Okay. Now, on this side here, this is only a diagram, don't forget, we've got a set of contacts. And these contacts, um, this will again will have 12 volts, battery voltage, and then this will then go off to your little lights, to your spotlights. Okay, a couple of spotlights on the front bumper, and again, they will go down to earth. Now, there's different ways of drawing these circuits. When I'm going to earth, I always put this symbol here. You can actually run the wiring round onto a physical battery in the circuit, but we don't need to worry about that. Inside the relay, inside the box itself, is this bit. Okay, so everything inside the dotted square is inside this relay. 
And we call this half here with the coil of wire the trigger circuit, and I call this section here the actuation circuit, the circuit that's doing the work. Now, on this circuit here, this is going to be um, the large current, the heavy current circuit. We've got two, two, bul two bulbs in there. Let's say if we, they were each uh, 120 watts, each of these two big spotlight bulbs, that gives us 240 watts of power. Now you divide that by 12 and we're going to get 20 amps. So in that circuit there, there's going to be 20 amps flowing and in which case we're going to need to use a fuse of 25 amps to fuse that circuit. Very simple. Okay, um, I don't have a couple of bulbs at 120 watts and the power supply probably won't enjoy that either given the fact it doesn't quite go up that high um, on the amperage. Oh, it does, but it's, it's in the red, so we won't bother doing that. Um, I'll rig up a, a circuit using the relay, and then we can see how it operates. Okay, so we've got our relay, which is that one there. We'll just pull all those little contacts off the bottom. Now, I've got no idea whether this is going to work or not, to be honest with you. It's pretty old. Now, just to label up the numbers, We've got, um, have a look here, uh, 85, 86, which is either end of this coil of wire. So we'll give that um, 85, we'll give that 86. Now, the power into the main uh, circuit for the lamps is number 30, and the output is 87. There we go. And those are pretty standard numbers across all manufacturer relays, the four pin relays. So. 30 is always your power in. Right, so, pretty easy. Let's get this sorted out. So we've got uh, power in first of all. We're not going to bother fusing it, but you, as, as I've shown the diagram, you'll put a fuse in there normally. Uh, 30 is power in, so there's 30. Let's just plug that up. Let's give ourselves an extension to help with the camera a bit. Okay. That's power into the spotlights. Let's have some power out. I'll use a white one for that. So out was 87, and 87 is that one there. Look, so power coming out. And that's going to go to our light, which we use as a light. Let's use this old indicator. That will work. If it's got a bulb in it, who knows? Yes, it has. Maybe it's going to work. Okay, pop that onto there. And like we said before, that now has to go down to ground after our lamp. So ground is battery negative. Cool, okay. I've just got the trigger circuit still to do now. So the trigger circuit is 85 and 86, which is the remaining two. It doesn't matter which one we go on to. And let's give ourselves another fly lead. So battery positive. And this is going to be our switch. I'll manually connect and disconnect this, but we'll leave it on for now. Connect it up. And we need another return to earth. So this is the other side of the coil, the trigger coil that needs to go back to earth. Now we've already got an earth here, look, so we can tap into that if we want, rather than run all the way back to the battery again. That will give us an earth. There we go. And is it on? Yes, it's on. Let's get it booted up to 12 volts. Oh, I don't see a lot happening. Okay, so maybe that bulb is shot. Let's just pull that out. Let's get our trusted Yamaha Viking tail light bulb. Stick that in there. It could be the relay that's shot, actually. Let's give it a go anyway. And that's power out of the relay. There we go, look. Okay, so the bulb is on. If I disconnect the trigger circuit, the relay, you'll hear the click of the relay and the light goes out. So. That's you connecting the switch on the dashboard. That activates the relay, then the relay transfers the current to the bulb. Now, just to show you what I mean by amperage, the reason why we use relays is if we just get our trusty multimeter, pop that onto uh, amps. There we go. Now, remember with amps, using an ammeter, you've got to put it in circuit. So let's just pop it in circuit on there. So the trigger circuit is, we've only got 0.13 amps going through the trigger circuit. Cool, 
Okay, that's easy. What have we got going through the actual um, bulb circuit? The circuit that's doing all the work. Well, we've got a 21 watt uh, bulb, 12 volt filament, been energized there. Let's just break it off there. I'll have to hold this one. And on the bulb circuit, we've got 1.6 amps, so considerably more. And obviously that could be a lot higher. Let's see what the rating of the actual uh, relay is. It's usually 10, 15, 20, 30 amps relay. Has it got a rating on there? Will have done at some point. It's probably rubbed off, disappeared into the abyss. So, hey, good news is it still works. Now, I did find another relay. Uh, this one here. This is made by... Oh, my word, it's Chinese. Okay. So there you go. We've got... 85, 86 again on that relay, and we've got uh, 87. Now they've labeled it 87A. That's really uh, when you have a, a five pin relay and it flicks from one output terminal to the other, whether it's energized or not. We've got 87 and again 30. So we can very easily swap out this relay and put this one in and see if it's going to work. So we'll just turn the power down. We have got 30. Plug on number 30 on there. There he is, number 30. And you see the, the difference in colour of the pins as well. Um, this is power in, so that's definitely going to be the, without even looking at the, the, the numbering, that's going to be the power supply coming out of the relay for the lamps. And there it is, sure enough, 87. Okay, 87A in fact. Okay, so power to the lamps was yellow wire, that one there. So that goes on there. Now remember the other two are irrelevant, doesn't matter which way around they go at all. It's just a trigger circuit, as long as we get current flow it's going to work. Power back on again. So we can just disconnect that. Ah, okay. So what we've got here is a relay on this one, it's a near 4 pin relay, but we've got one which when it's energized it breaks the circuit. When it's de-energized, it connects the circuit. Cool, might come in handy one day. So again, that relay is working just fine. And the amperage flow is gonna be exact, well, it's gonna be the same on the output circuit. It might be slightly different on the input circuit. Let's just test that. So. Yeah. We've got, on that one there, we've got 0.17 amps um, required to energize the, the trigger of winding, this one here. Okay, well that pretty much sums up how to wire up a relay. Okay, so that was one of, another one of our basic skills, one of my basic skills videos. Uh, just very quickly showing you how to wire up a simple 4-pin relay. And we covered a couple of relays that I found kicking around. Uh, this one here is your standard type four pin relay which would connect the the uh, the switch inside for the output circuit for the uh, to trigger the spotlights to provide current to the spotlights when it's energized we also found another relay this one here which works the other way around when we give the trigger circuit a current it disconnects a switch inside and there are lots of different kinds of relays out there you can buy you can buy by, by relays that are a five pin, which um, when they are not energized, they provide current to one side, um, to, the, to, to, um, to one output terminal, um, just like what that one would do. And um, when it's energized, that output flicks across to a different terminal. Um, so that, that could be used, for example, if you had a flasher relay, which you are having to use to power lots and lots of lights, like for example on, a, on a, an ambulance or something where you've got uh, lots of alternating lights going on, too much current for a flasher relay to cope with, you could use the flasher relay to trigger the, the five pin relay and then those two output pins could then split to, uh, to you know, opposite lights. So, very simple, hopefully, 
you got that. Uh, my name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at uh, Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, this is one of, our, one of my basic skills videos. Hope you found it interesting, helpful. Any questions, comments, leave them down the bottom and I'll do my very best to help. Cheers, over and out.